Well, seeing as it is Sunday at yes. Otakon, yes. how are you feeling? Sunday at Otakon. I think everybody's a little tired because, you know, part, part for the course here is you, you're all day full of activities and then all night you're socializing and right. <laughs> hanging out with people. So it's been just the best. We've never been to Otakon before. Okay. Uh, Sandy Fox and, and myself. And um, it's awesome. The, the staff is great. The, the fans and the people, the friends we've been making are awesome. And uh, awesome. we hope to come back because... That's pretty cool. Excellent. So, I mean, what were your sort of first impressions of Otakon? Um, it was like laid back and, and like I said, everyone was so approachable and friendly and and it was fun to like, you know, roam the dealer's room and like meet people and it was it was cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, now, in addition to anime, you've also done a lot of video games and a lot of American anime. Yes. Can. So, I was curious as to if your approach to um, voice acting for these characters um, differs or if it has to differ based on basically the different forms of media. It does. It has to differ because with original animation, we get our scripts, say, three, four days in advance. When we go to record, we record in what they call theater style. And so they have the entire, you know, the entire cast is there. We each have our own microphone. Okay. We interact, we do a rehearsal before we record. So we rehearse and then we get the notes from the director. And if we want to improvise a little, we can. We can just like add a little, you know, as the nuances of our character development, we can throw in there. And the director will either say, hey, that was good. Or they'll say, let's leave out that little line you threw in on the first run. So. With anime, it's basically taking someone else's original animation that's already been animated. Oh yeah, the key point here is that when we're done recording in uh, original animation in the US, then they go and do the animation to our voices. Right. So when we're doing anime, firstly, we're by ourselves. There's not the whole cast there with us. Secondly, we're recording in an adaptation of a script that was like a translation and then an English adaptation designed to fit the flaps. Right. So the technique involved with anime is a lot different than the acting technique in an original animation. Okay. So, you know, we have to literally hit the flaps, so there's there's acting within a certain parameter that we have to do. And we really rely on the director of anime to tell us what's going on in the story. Because they might say, like, turn to page two, that's your first line. So we'll do our first line. And then they'll say, okay, now turn to page 27, that's when your character comes back. And we say, well, what happened from page 2 to 27? And we go, <laughs> oh, well, these, this, this, and this happened, and then uh, you found out about something, so your character is coming back. So it's a little different as an actor okay. to develop our you know, characters and things. But it's, uh, we really rely on the director a lot in anime. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as the U.S. animation, like you've done a yes. lot of like super iconic characters, yes. Doctor Doom. Um, Doctor Doom. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, even I mean, Captain Cold now has a following thanks to nice. the Flash. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I just I have to I have to ask like, what is it like to sort of wake up and be like, oh yeah, so I got to do the voice of the icon that is Doctor Doom. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a like a sci-fi. I won't, I won't say geek, but like I'm a sci-fi fan mm -hmm. myself, so it's pretty surreal, you know, because we, we audition for everything. It's not like they call us up and go, hey, hey, we got this part for you, which would be awesome. And I'm sure at some level that happens, right. but, you know, even the best of the best, they still audition for, for a lot of stuff. So first we get to hear we're auditioning for something, and it's like, oh, this is Dr. Doom. Oh, wow. I got a chance to be Dr. Doom here. <laughs> Okay, I better get this right, you know. So, like, we look into developing, you know, at least some something that'll make us stand out as actors that we can contribute that maybe another person might not. So, when we get the roles, like, I'm skipping around my house. And when I find that it's, I, like, I, I got Han Solo for a lot of the LucasArts games, mm -hmm. and it was uh, an audition with, there were 1,600 people involved in auditioning in four different cities. Wow. In San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in New York, and Chicago. And those 400 in each city, were, there were 40, 40 people from 10 agencies in each city, and those got boiled down, boiled down, boiled down until it was four people. Okay. And when it was down to four people, we did phone patches with LucasArts wow. so that they could hear what we were doing. And when my agent called me to tell me I got the part, 
it's funny because I cosplayed as Han Solo when I was, oh, when I was awesome. younger. So like I was like at all these conventions as Han walking around with my three friends in high school and early part of college. <laughs> and I was so excited. I was like screaming, like I won't say like a girl, but like, I was like, Ooh, yeah, woo, Han Solo. You know, like I was running around and I called my friends from high school. Like, right. you know, I was still in touch with a couple of them and I was like, guess what? <laughs> so remember when we cosplayed together? Guess what? I got the voice up. You know, I was so excited. That's so, awesome. So yeah, big characters. You know, um, for me personally, my own thing is that like I I try to remain grateful and humble. Like those are the two main aspects that kind of remind myself of every course. day. Because otherwise, it, you can kind of slip away from that, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I'm on solo. You know, it's like, <laughs> but but for me, it's like I just wake up every day and I'm like, I'm so grateful. This is my job. I'm so grateful that I'm able to learn from the people I work with. Because every single time I go into a session, like I might be sitting next to guys like uh, Frank Welker or Jeff Bennett, and, mm -hmm. and these are just icons in the animation world. And I'm, it's just the three of us doing a show, you know, and I'm sitting there going, you know, first pinch myself because is this a dream, you know? And then second, I'm, I'm sometimes a little maybe too quiet in between the takes because I'm just observing the genius that's happening, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, master class, master class right now happening, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, it's a dream come true, really. That's awesome. As an actor, yeah. Um, now, one of the anime roles that you had is one of my all-time favorite series, which is Digimon. And Digimon um, okay. Now, with the <laughs> uh, the adventure sort of being continued with the movies that are coming out this year, um, I was curious if you still had the interest in sort of going back and revisiting a series that, at least for kids my age, yeah. we have a lot of nostalgia for. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to revisit it. I, I don't know if, if War Greymon will appear in the new Digimon right. or not. If he does, hopefully they will call me and say, we'd love you to reprise your role. Um, it's funny, War Greymon uh, didn't have a lot to say other than his name. Right. You know, he did a lot of grunts and roars and things, but most of the time he just kind of announced himself when he digivolved, you know, War Greymon! You know, it was like, <laughs> so, you know, I must have said that 150 times. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, sort of looking back, now 15, 16 years yeah. on that series. Um, Time flies. Exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just sort of curious, like, were you surprised that, that Digimon sort of, like, caught on in the United States and is sort of still sort of held a lot of significance for a lot of fans? Yeah, well, you know what I found is, like, a lot of the shows that were from that sort of era have been... Those guys, uh, not those guys, those shows have um, come back as classics. Right. And so there's a whole new generation that's, that are discovering them for the first time. And when I go to these different cons, it's amazing because it's like the parents come in with their kids who are into it, but the parents were into it right. 17 years ago, you know? So it's nice to see it like kind of jumping generations, you know? Right. Um, and I guess my last question would be, okay. um, do you have any sort of moments from the last year or so that you're super proud of? And is there <clears throat> anything big coming down the line that you can, I guess, legally hmm. talk about yet? <laughs> super proud of. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm really proud of most of the work I do. But I was asked recently to, in terms of anime, mm -hmm. I was asked to direct a show called All Know a Zero. Of course. So uh, being the English voice director for that has been really thrilling. That's I, got awesome. to, I got to meet the entire this weekend. I got to meet the entire production team and the real the director of the the animated oh, the original cool. animation from there. I got to play a character uh, in it. I auditioned for one that I wanted because I still had to audition. It's funny because sure. I don't really have say. I mean, in the casting side of it, and so I auditioned for one character, but the casting thought it would be better if I played this other character, okay. Count Cruteo. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a great couple of years. I'm uh, in in terms of anime. I'm also in Dorarar, okay. uh, playing a couple of characters there. Mm -hmm. In Fate Stay Night, I'm mm -hmm. doing a couple of characters in that. Um, I had the privilege of doing a bunch of the dinosaur sounds in Jurassic World. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So when the Velociraptors are turning their head and going like, <laughs> and making all kinds of noises and stuff. That's I got to do that, and I got to play some French people because uh, it's all the background people are like from all different countries and things. So sure. I got to play some. I speak French, so I got to do some of that. Oh, awesome! Um, you know, I got to play some voices in Avengers: Age of Ultron. I I've, uh, did a voice replacement in Iron Man three when it was here. Um, 
and the Wolverine and mm -hmm. Captain America, Winter Soldier, awesome. and so like all these blockbuster movies, you know, I can go, oh, there I am, you know, for one line, <laughs> or, you know, it's always a little thing, unless it's animals or creatures. Right. Um, I got to be a lot of the demons in the television show Constantine. Um, and other than that, um, you know, there's always, oh, there's exciting stuff, like I got to play this new character named Torvald in the Evolve video game. Okay. And then also Spyglass in, um, oh boy, it's a bad time to forget the name of this video game. Oh yeah, uh, Titanfall. Okay. In Titanfall, yeah. <laughs> It's exciting as an actor because every week is something new. Right. At the beginning of the month, my calendar is completely empty. So it's a little nerve-wracking, you know, going, oh, well, I, don't have any, I don't have any work this month. Right. But at the end of the month, I can look back and go, oh, great, I did 15 jobs in the last four weeks. So, right. you know, it ends up working out. But I'm just so grateful. And, you know, like I said, it's like every session that I do, especially in the original animation stuff, is like, dream come true stuff working with these other actors who I admire it's like yes Frank Wilker yes <laughs> everybody you know right <laughs> so well awesome so dinosaurs superheroes and giant robots another yeah. day in the life <laughs> another day in the life <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much thank you